Hi, I'm Fran Tarkin, and welcome to an, another coaching session. Uh, this one is so uniquely different. We learn from other people. I've often told, told you on, on this program so many times, I don't have an original thought in my life. I've learned from what I read, what I see, what I hear. But you got to hang around the right people. Today we have a unique human being with us, Bob Rich. His father started a, a, a company called Rich Products back in 1945. He's second generation there. I knew his dad. They bought a little company down in uh, uh, St. Simons, Georgia, CPAC, and frozen foods, and that's what they do. And he's been a remarkable businessman. Lives in Buffalo, uh, New York, but he's much more than that. And what he has done in life is what successful business people can do. And this is life lessons we're going to do today, really life lessons. He's written a novel. Now, he's written books uh, non-fiction books, but this is, I think, Bob, your, your first, your first uh, novel, Looking Through Waters. And I've just browsed through at this point, but I want you to pick up this book and read this book. And you can get it on Amazon or anything else because this is a person that you would look up to as a business person, an entrepreneur who's got a three and a half billion dollar business. And that's not easy to get to that place. It's not easy to keep it going. But the Rich family has kept that going since 1945 and just doing so. And they've done so many great things, so many charitable things involved in the city of Buffalo. At one time, I believe the Buffalo Bills Stadium was named Rich Stadium. Is absolutely. It? Absolutely. Uh, on the hockey team there. He's on the, uh, the Cle Cleveland Clinic uh, uh, Board, which is one of the great hospital institutions in this country. Welcome, my friend. Good Thank to you. see you. You know that you really flattered me, Fran, with that, and I appreciate it. But you forgot one of one of my credits. Okay. That I'm a huge fan of Fran Tarkenton, and I remember you may have forgotten, but uh, you know an Athens boy like you, but you used to work with our people at uh, Rich CPAC at St. Simon's Island, and uh, one of the first times I've seen how much people can get out of talking to yeah. someone who is so strong in the motivation business. So well, so you you and I do go way we back. Do, we do go way back, and, and we did a lot of work at CPAC, where he has a great company down in St. Simons, uh, Brunswick, Georgia. It's actually in St. Simons, isn't it? That's right. And, and so, and, and uh, we worked with their employees and their leadership down there because we could all get better. And the great thing about the Rich family, they, they never stop learning, they never stop progressing. They're ahead of the curve, and that's why they've been in business so long, and it's a good lesson for us. But what he's done is a unique thing. And I've, again, Sprout, why did you go into a novel? I know it's about family, and you talk, you're you avid fisherman and outdoorsman, and and I know how, you know, it, how family-oriented all of you people are. Tell me about this book, what's in this book, why we should read this book. It's yours. Well, thank you, Fran. And, uh, you know, I'm not a writer. You're a writer. You've written 11 books. I've written five. I'm trying to catch up with yeah. you. But I think I am a storyteller, and I love how words come together and when people use words correctly. So I think like a lot of people, I always had a novel in me. It's just maybe one of the toughest things to do because you're starting with a blank sheet of paper, as you know, yeah. and it can go anywhere, and it's like creation. And it was, uh, for me, this was a chance to write a story where I could create characters. And uh, also it's a chance where I could talk about some of the things I, I know very well, and that's family. Because in a family business, there are a lot of interrelationships between generations. And looking through water gave me a chance to bring characters to life. When you talk about the family business, some of them, uh, entrepreneurs all start. I'm, I, my, my kids work with me here. You grew up in a family business. Your father started it. You started working there when? Oh, I was um, nine years old with putting tops on whip topping cans. They gave me one a penny for every top I put on a uh, on a whip topping can, and I went in my piggy bank. And but you know, to me, life and business are intertwined. It's not like this is my business life and this is my family life. Obviously. You embrace that totally. Well, I do, and and it's been a very happy affair for me. But any of your uh, any of your friends and and people who are watching this know 
Um, family business can be hard. It's not just, uh, you know, a publicly held share, you know, companies, you don't ha interact with your family like you do. And so um, it, it's challenging, but it's, there's nothing more rewarding in the world. Here, you talk about relationships. Family is maybe the toughest relationships, right? So Absolutely. They, they really are. I think so. If you think yours is complicated, all of us are complicated. You know, when we have children and grandchildren and so forth, and you've kind of, it's been a kind of a therapy for you to be able to get to know your grandkids and your kids through the water, through fishing, and, and, and your outdoors life that you you so yeah, cherish. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think one of the key things, I had once had an old-time friend who said, you know, the best estate planning and is by ha having well-educated children, to bring your children along, to know that the business, what the business means, not just to them, but in our case, 10,000 people who work in our company yeah. around the world, and also the customers we serve. And, and so I think it starts by conversation. And one of the ways to get that is to turn off the cell phones and turn, out, turn off the iPads and, and, uh, and use an old art form of storytelling. Isn't that the truth? Because we listen to stories. So you could write uh, nonfiction, which you've done. Right. But you decided to go and make up, when you do that, are the characters based on characters that you know or kind of close to those characters? Yeah, it, it, this is not autobiographical. However, Fran, as you know in your writing, that you write about things you know about. So in my characters, um, they're kind of composites of people I've known. And uh, water, in, instead of just being a fishing book, looking through water create, uses water as backdrop that I can put my characters into situations where it can be life and death, and they have to learn to relate to each other, and they do, and, and it's, I think it speaks also, friend, of the healing nature of water. You know, mm. the biblical references to baptism and, and, and the using water for healing, and I think there's nothing more true than in this book. And also, I wanted to share with you that um, because I have a good day job, which you were so generous in yeah. going over, uh, I don't need the proceeds of this book. So I have found a group that uh, I that are getting the proceeds of the book and we're making all proceeds go to Project Healing Waters where um, you know we're, we're trying to deal with the crime of what happened in this country when our, our fighting people came back from Vietnam and we're trying now with returning uh, kids coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq that are so wounded in many ways, sometimes physically, but all often emotionally. So this is a chance to give back to an organization that embraces young people coming back that are in such need, who have made uh, possible for you and I to yeah. live the lives that we do. And we're taping this on Veterans Day. Yeah, and, it's, and, and, and it's so a, unique because right here on the, on the camera, he, he talks about the proceeds of of this great book, Looking Through Waters, and he, the proceeds are going to the veterans. Yeah, and I'm thrilled. I've met a lot of these uh, young people, and uh, you know, I'm proud of the way our country is uh, finally catching up and learning and being appreciative and paying back to the people who've been responsible for us uh, having uh, the kind of lifestyles we've enjoyed. And, and Looking Through Water is more than just a more than a fishing book, it really speaks to the healing nature of, of um, the water world. Get me through a little bit of the storyline of the book. Well, um, briefly, it starts with, uh, on the cover, is a picture of a grandfather, and he's on a lake in the Adirondacks, and he has a very special fishing date with his grandson, who's been the light of his life, and his grandson has become a hoodie-dressed, uh, very sullen, uh, uncommunicative child. And the grandfather wants desperately to reach out to the boy and find out what's troubling him. In order to do that, he doesn't just get in the kid's face and say, now listen here, Junior, whatever. He uses the art of storytelling to reach into his past and tell the stories that the boy would relate to. And the story is what looking through water is all about. It introduces several characters, many of them from uh, New York or, or the Adirondacks or the Florida Keys, 
who come alive out of the pages to help the grandfather deal with his uh, grandson's problems. Wow, what a great premise. And so these are things that are important for all of us to learn. It's real life experiences told from real life experiences, but put in novel form, which gave you the freedom to go make the characters what you wanted to make them. Yeah, and I, and I it's so gratifying once you finish this. This book took about four years, and at a book signing today, this very day on Veterans Day, I had a guy come up and he said, you know, I read your book, and I've had trouble talking to my children, and I've given them copies, and we have now opened a dialogue that we never thought we could have. We work close mm. together, but we've never talked about important issues. And this was, for me, this was an unintended consequence, Fran. I hadn't planned this, but I think it, um, you know, it's kind of a conversation starter, and I'm thrilled about that. You know, many people think the mission of business is to make money. What Bob knows, and I've learned, the mission of business is to help people. The byproduct is we can make some money and then do something really good with it. But it's about, to me, business life is about service. It's about doing for others. And the reason this great business has not only survived since 1945, that's uh, 55 plus 15, that's 70 years. Just had a big anniversary yeah. here this year, Fred. Not only have We they missed you. We had a party in St. Simons, and you didn't show up. I missed getting my invitation, but I would go next well, time. Well, you I'm know, these Christmas mails are running a little slow. <laughs> but the, the thing about why they have prospered and survived, and we read all the time. I read about IBMs having a hard time making money, having a hard time growing. Coca-Cola, hard time growing. So many companies. The rich companies, they prosper. And I think why they do is because of the core of your culture is well, service with your people, listen, with your customers. Listen, so Hall forth. of Famer, you're making me blush here. That's I, true. You're making me blush, but I, I'm proud of our, our company. And I'm proud that we ha that it has afforded me the time to be able to write some books too and to renew my friendship with you. But it is good, but it's good for our people to understand the way you prosper, the way you have the best chance of prospering, the best chance is when we are, our culture is a culture of love and service. Yeah, I, you know, I couldn't agree more. And when I was in business school back in the 60s, I was taught that the business of business is business and forget about everything. Supply jobs, be profitable. But you know what? That may have been true then, but it's not true, true now. now. You can't live your life that way. You can't prosper in a company and have your whole community uh, in, 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 torn and shattered and, and be happy and successful. So I, I'm thrilled that maybe, maybe that uh, this is a learned thing in our company, and all of our people are reaching out to all kinds of charities. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, that makes, makes me as chairman of the board very proud. Think of this. He's got 10,000 employees scattered around the world. I uh, once talked to Pete Carroll about Seattle Seahawks coach, about culture. And I remember I mentioned to him that you know, you can have 40 all pros on your football team. And if you have, if you don't have a culture <coughs> of respect, a culture of the L word love, you're not going to win. I, I agree. I agree completely. <coughs> Listen, the Buffalo Bills, as you remember when you were playing and w under Marv Levy, they went to the Super Bowl. They lost four Super Bowls in a row. And uh, it may have been one of the best teams in the yeah. NFL because I don't think anybody will get that far. But they learn from it, and guys like Jim Kelly have thrived. And, and he's a payback guy like yourself. He's giving oh, he's back great. to the community. And, uh, you know, if, if it weren't for that, I mean, what do we live for, Fran, oh. if, we, if we don't have a chance we to give back? We live for making, making it better for other people. Absolutely. We want to leave it better than we got it. i got to tell a story of Jim Kelly. I've never met Jim Kelly until the Hall of Fame this year when right. my center McTinglehoff got in. Yeah. And I've been a fan of Jim Kelly's and so Peyton Manning was there also. Right. 
and uh, because his general manager, Bill Polian, who used to be at Buffalo, right, and was his the guy that drafted him in Indianapolis. So the Manning family very close to me and Archie's close. Right. So Peyton was there. We were backstage. I never met Jim Kelly. Right. I met Peyton when he was 12 years old. Right. Talked to his father every week. But so we're having a great time talking football and stuff. So finally I look at Jim Kelly and said, Kelly, you're my favorite player in all the world. He says, I am? Why? I said, because you lost four Super Bowls and I only lost three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, next time you're talking to Pete Carroll, tell him to use Marshawn Lynch on those short yardage situations. Yeah, I situations. think it might, it might be good. Anyway, this has been such a, such a treat. I want you to do yourself a favor. Looking through waters, Bob Rich, because uh, this is a entrepreneur, businessman, family business. He could have turned out, you know, he didn't have to work. Business was there, but he did because the culture of this great company for 70 years has been a culture of respect and love. You want to succeed? You want to be able to have stickability and be able to continue to grow? You developed a culture of love and respect for all of your customers, all of your employees, all of your friends, and even the people that you may think are your enemies. When that happens, great things happen. And be proud of your friends like I am of you, Fran Tarkenton. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me with you today. Good to be with you, Bob. Thank, Thank you, you so much.